Hey, what's up, YouTube? Welcome back to the Knicks Cave. I'm Jan, the Knicks fan, your host, and let's get right into it. Um, what can I say? Um, half of the season is gone. Te technically, this is halfway through the midseason, even though there's basically been um, around 52 games played so far. Um, actually, 59 games played. The Knicks have 23 games left. And what we going to do? What we going to do? Excuse me. But before we get into it, I want y'all to do me a small favor. I want y'all to hit that like button, leave a comment, uh, definitely subscribe. And if, if you want to know when the next video is going to drop, hit the notification bell. Um, All-Star break. Knicks got a, the Knicks got a nice little rest before they play their next game. It's Friday against the Miami Heat. And it's, it's a tough stretch. It's a tough stretch. I'm not going to lie, Zarell. It's, it's a tough stretch for the Knicks. We're going to be playing the Clippers, um, Golden State Warriors, and need I say Portland, <laughs> Portland Trail Blazers, Blazers. Um, yeah, the Knicks got a um, Philadelphia. We're going to play them back to back twice. So the Knicks got a tough road. We're like four games, four and a half games behind um, the Atlanta Hawks um, outside of that um, play in competition. We rank number 12. But right now, it's the All Star. Well, All Star break is over. We're going to try to make a push or we're going to. Play the young guys, I don't know, or play the young guys and try to make a push at the same time because the changes need to, need to be made right now. Tom Thibodeau, he's, I could say he's, he's not on a hot seat, but it's a warm seat. It's kind of warm right now. So I wonder what the Knicks management is going to do with him um, come um, after the season. You know what I'm saying? Uh, it has been a tough 11 days just before the um, All-Star break. You know, so he gave away three 20 point leads. He made crazy decisions with RJ Barrett, leaving him in garbage time, causing causing an injury. I know some people might say that injury could have happened any time throughout the game. And that's true, but then it would be justified. He wouldn't like you don't play it's 30 seconds left. You're down 15, 20, you're being blown out. You know what I'm saying? And you put the man back in there. Then not to mention Calling, uh, challenging a, a play with Evan Foyer, which everybody clearly see Evan Foyer did foul, son. And then forgetting that he called the challenge and couldn't use his timeout. Tried to call a timeout to call a challenge. Lost the timeout. So, I don't know. Like, like right now, we're 25 and 34. Like I said, we're sitting in 12th place in the Eastern Conference. Um, you already see what my man went up to him, James Dolan. William Wesley, and I actually kind of agree with him, you know what I'm saying, because a lot of people, and this, this is what I don't get, you know what I'm saying, a lot of people want to say it's everybody's fault, they blaming Leon Rose, they blaming w William Wesley, w they blaming everybody, and they, they, they throwing a little bit towards Tom Thibodeau, and that's the media, and I actually think they're wrong, excuse me for a second, a little, a little too much right there, um, I actually think they're wrong. I actually agree with um I actually agree with William. Um I, my man going do Dolan because I do think it's Tom Thibodeau for because Tom Thibodeau is the head coach. Tom Thibodeau is the one moving the chess pieces. When they are on the basketball court, it's a chessboard. Tom Thibodeau is the man that's moving the pieces. Leon Rose is not moving the pieces. Um William Wesley's not moving the pieces. James Dolan's not moving the pieces. The man that's moving the pieces around the board is Tom Thibodeau. The man that's making all the decisions while the game is being played is Tom Thibodeau. So it only falls on Tom Thibodeau. So I'm getting tired of hearing in the daily news and everybody, Ian Begley, everybody is saying, oh, it's the whole, new, it's the team's fault, it's management fault, it's the coach's fault, it's the players' fault. The, oh, like, yes, the players and the coaches got to be held accountable. But we got to be honest, the management did what they had to do to make this team better. Um, it's not their fault that he's not utilizing these guys' skills to the, to the best of their abilities. Now, we could talk about Evan Foyer and Kimba Walker, and yes, that, that might have been bad signings, you know what I'm saying? But they can still contribute to this team if the, to if the coach put them in the right position to contribute. Um, that's why I'm saying he might be on the hot seat, and some people might say he might get fired. Well, in, in NBA, it's called a buyout, and... If the Knicks was to buy him out, it wouldn't really cost that much. They probably 
around six, maybe five million. Is that he have a contract? I think roughly like four and a half, four five years around it. But I know it was seventeen million dollars. He get paid forty four four point something million dollars annually. So if we were just to let him go and couldn't get a buyout, we'd be playing him something just a little bit over nine million. So that's why I say if we can buy him out, it'll be somewhere around five million, six million dollars. Um, but who would get out? Who who be our next coach? I like Mark Jackson to be honest with you, but can he can he paying to step in there if he don't take that coaching job in college? But like I said, Tom Thibodeau ha Tom Thibodeau have to own up to his mistakes and what he led this team to. That's, that's all I can say. It's Tom Thibodeau's fault. I mean, the, the players could be playing better. Julius Randle is a big part of it also. And Tom Thibodeau should be playing the young guys. I'm going to talk about that a little later. But um, with the, you know, the go off Tom Thibodeau to see, like like I said, the Knicks got to do a lot of a lot of things have to be changed now going, in, going further down the line in the season. We don't know how the season going to end, what the management have in store for this team are they going to trade any of the veterans because i'm hearing everything is on the table julius randall everybody they, if it's going except for the young guys that's the thing about it that's why i like this management that's why i'm not i'm not really trying to blame this um leon rules or anybody in management for nothing because i think they did a hell of a job putting this team together other than signing nerlene's noel <laughs> so let me back up because i don't i don't think they should have signed nerlene's noel and i don't think they should have re-signed Tobbs gibson um, and truth be told, Alec Burke either. But um, I would have I would have risked the Alec Burke signing. But the other two players, no, I don't think they should have brought them players back. Yeah, I respect what they did with, for us last season. But them them two players we could have did without. Them with roster spots we could have filled with two athletic players, um, younger players. But it is what it is. They head now. Uh, Derrick Rose will soon be returning and. Um, that's all gonna go. Maybe the line, 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 a lineup change. Maybe Derrick Rose will be our starting point guard. Then that is this gonna leave us? Who's gonna be our backup start? Our backup point guard? If Derrick Rose come in and start, I mean, we have this guy. I can't not pronounce his last name. Ryan, um, Austin, Austin, I can't pronounce that last name. Um, I don't know if he's healthy yet. He should be right there. He's a, he's a, he's a point guard. But I don't know if Tibbs would use him. We still have McBride. I know he's. I know Tibbs gonna try to go with either Alec Burke or um, Emmanuel quickly as a backup point guard. That's if Derrick Rose start. Well, he can still go with Kimba. Who knows? But lineup changing. Like everybody blaming Kimba, but I just think the way Julius Randle played and come down the court, it takes everybody out their game. So, um, so they. Um, so basically, they they don't they don't expect the ball when they get the ball. Sometimes, let's be honest. And I don't know, but I think Kimma Walker, if they give the man a shot and let the man play, and I know everybody's going to say, oh, he has been playing, but I don't think he's been playing the way he would like to play, especially if Julius Randle's the point guard. How's he playing? You know what I'm saying? He's supposed to be the point guard. All right, so like I said, the lineup change, he's going to have to have a lineup change and come back after the All-Star break. We got a long little rest before... We play again, like I said, next game we play is Friday against the Miami Heat. Maybe Tibbs can work out. I, look, the biggest problem with Tibbs, he need an offensive coordinator. I know I'm sounding like football, but he needs somebody that he need, because he's doing it both. He's our defensive coach and he's our offensive coach. And he needs somebody that concentrate on offense. That's the truth, you know what I'm saying? He want to do everything by himself. So that's why I'm saying it's time Thibodeau fought because his assistant coach don't have that much ready in that much input into what he do in his game plan well at least it, look at the sideline you know what i'm saying um coming back from the all-star break will he play um the younger guys more i mean quentin grimes is getting burned and i mean i'm happy but obi topping um my man we just drafted for um cam reddish uh mcbride jericho mcsims Jericho Mason, Jericho Sims. These are all guys that can be out on the floor right now so we can see what we got for next year. We, he should have been doing this throughout the season, especially when we get blown out. If we get blown out by 20 points, bring them dudes in with five minutes left. And think about it, when, when we get blown up and he do bring in the young guys, the young two young guys, Obi Toppin and Emmanuel Quick and have a, a high rating with them two guys on the floor. They actually bring the energy of the Knicks up. Um, 
he takes him out quickly and put them his veterans back in and we lose the game so a lot a lot got to be done you know what i'm saying so i think he should play the young guys more i want to see jericho sims and i want to see mcbride on the floor i think especially sims i think sims is going to be a beast i don't know i don't i'm mean like this we don't know if sims even got a mid-range jump shot we don't know if he can hit the three four out of I ain't gonna say four, two out of eight times. We don't know because he's not getting a chance. But what I have seen of him, I know he could dunk the ball. I know he's a, a, like a Mitchell Robinson type guy. If, he, if you can feed him the ball and down in the post, he's going to score. But we don't know what he can do. Sometimes he be, he make defensive, good defensive plays. Sometimes he look a little lost, but that's because he's not getting any playing time. And not only is he not getting any playing time, he's worrying about getting yanked if he make any mistakes. He out. Tip snatch him out the game. But um, I don't understand why McBride not in the game. When he, every time I watch him down in the G League, he getting busy. He's averaging more than seven assists down there. And you're going to tell me he can't average five assists with this group? You know what I'm saying? He would look more for, he would look to pass the ball more than quickly. And that's what I don't understand. I'm being honest. I don't understand why he is putting quickly in over McBride when McBride is the more true point guard. This is why I'm, I'm, I, I got to say, we have to get rid of Tom Thibodeau. There's no ifs, no buts, no maybes. If he don't change his style up coming, when we come back from the All-Star break, if, if everything that happened haven't shown the man that he need to make changes, then we have to fire him. All right, let's get to Julius Randle. Julius Randle, I'm not going to lie to you, in the last seven games, he stepped up. He stepped up. But the thing about Julius Randle, and I have said in my past videos, I don't like to call his points garbage time, but I call it stat stuffing because he basically stuffed his stats then rather get his teammates involved. And I know y'all gonna say, oh, he had five, six assists. Yeah, he get that early in the game. When second half come, he ain't thinking about passing. He only pass if he have to pass. And usually them are some crazy, stupid passes out of triple and double teams. And the man is not making smart decisions. That's why I say even he is on the block right now. So I don't know if Julius Randle come back, play the way he did last year. Matter of fact, the team have to play the way they did last year. But in order for the team to play the way they did last year, it started with Julius Randle and Coach Tom Thibodeau. So we're going to have to see what these two guys are going to do once we start back on Friday against the Miami Heat. Julius Randle, like I say, he has been playing very well for the last seven games, averaging 29 points. 12 rebounds and 6.3 assists a game kind of contradicts what i said about him not passing the ball but y'all know exactly what i mean because y'all watch the game sometimes the stats can be deceiving <laughs> all right so let's talk about is this mitchell robinson last year you know i'm saying we only have two free agents it's the guy who i say i cannot pronounce the name ryan um Ryan Arsicano, Ryan Arsicano, and Mitchell Robinson. But Mitchell Robinson has showed for the last couple of games that he's worth keeping. How much we want to sign him for? Um, the Knicks, in my opinion, I think the Knicks already gauged what he's worth out there in free agency. And I think they're ready to match anything that anybody willing to offer Mitchell Robinson right now. That's my opinion. You know what I'm saying? You can't hold me to stone to um stone because like I said, it's my opinion. But um other than Mitchell Robinson and Ryan Austin, whatever, I ain't gonna get it, Austin Connell. What we gonna do? Who's who's leaving? If we're gonna find a way to get rid of Tobbs Gibson, New Orleans Noel, is Evan Foyer gone, is Kimber Walker gone, is R I'm not gonna say RJ, we know RJ Barrett ain't going. I said RJ Barrett, but you know RJ Barrett ain't going nowhere. Make my mistake. Um, I meant to say Julius Randle. All them guys is going to be on the table. Everything's going to be on the table. I think the Knicks is going to concentrate on their young core. And, and rightfully so. Rightfully so. Rightfully so. Um, I don't know. Like, the All-Star break is usually give teams time to reflect on what went wrong. Coaches come up with different game plans. And I hope this coach, well, we all know how stubborn he is. But I hope this coach sit back, relax, and come up with something different i hope we start playing our young guys to be honest with you um like i said we 23 games left uh we um four and a half games out of the play-in 
next year there won't be a plan so if we continue to do this next year we won't even have a chance at, at the playoffs like derrick rose come back and when derrick rose when we got derrick rose in that trade we what, what, we was like um the team was like 12 and 18. let me say our record right now since he's been out we 11 and 14 and no, excuse me, like, yeah, I said it, you know what I'm saying? I don't know. I, I mean, I got a little lost on words right there, but I don't know. But with that being said, I want everybody to stay safe, stay healthy, God bless, and peace.